Whenever you hear about ancient ruins, you rarely picture them being suspended somewhere or just randomly hanging on the branch of a tree, right? In fact, for most of the ancient artifacts we have exposed in museums all over the world, archaeologists did quite an impressive amount of digging. You see, buildings have this funny way of fading away over time if not properly taken care of. Sometimes we need to reuse some building materials, so an older construction may be sacrificed in the process. Houses are abandoned, and once they are exposed to the elements on the surface, like rain or sunlight, they don't stand a chance. Some just simply crumble away due to good old erosion. So the only way a piece of architecture can survive the test of time is if it's somehow gotten buried deep down. Now, how did they end up buried in the first place? Well, it's quite the comedy of errors. Ancient cities had a habit of gradually raising their ground level like a kid adding toppings to their ice cream sundae. You see, these settlements were always busy collecting food and building materials to keep up with their ever-growing population. But hey, who has the time to deal with waste and rubbish? It wasn't exactly on their to-do list back in the day. So when it came to building new homes, Ancient civilizations found it much easier to save their sweat and tears by piling up the rubble and constructing right on top. But that's not all. Rivers would also occasionally flood and deposit a layer of sediment on the city floors, further encapsulating those ancient constructions. And in those dry regions like the desert, where the wind likes to show off its sand and dust dance moves, you can bet it was a constant struggle to keep the establishments clean. One hilarious example is the Sphinx which had its head buried in the sand until a group of archaeologists unearthed it in 1817. Some ancient towns eventually got covered up because they were completely abandoned. With less human activity to control their expansion, plant seeds couldn't resist the opportunity and sprouted all over the place. They gobbled carbon dioxide from the air and grew, adding more and more bulk to the ground. Those cheeky roots even decided to stabilize the soil made from decaying plant matter, create layers upon layers of earthy goodness. It's like the ultimate DIY project Mother Nature embarked on with plants as her loyal helpers. The act of digging into the secrets of ancient civilizations is not just about unearthing a lost world. It's also an epic quest to reveal the hidden treasures beneath layers of history. But how do archaeologists know where to dig in the first place if everything is covered in layers upon layers of sediments, debris, and plant root? They must have some sort of system they rely on before embarking on a new project, right? For starters, they're not always the ones who suggest, as some local legislations have certain requirements before your project buildings on a piece of land. They might need to bring in specialists to check the soil. These clever folks can be archaeologists, geologists, or paleontologists, and they need to keep an eye on things during development. If any artifacts, ecofacts, or fan word for organic remnants are discovered, these experts swoop in to excavate and study them. But what about sites that have nothing to do with bulldozers and yellow hats? Archaeologists have more than one trick up their sleeves when it comes to locating ancient hotspots. They dive deep into historic records with a healthy dose of detective work. By sniffing out old documents and maps, they can piece together the puzzle of human activity in a specific area. If a site has been visited before, it's even better. Finding records of past excavations or historical accounts can give archaeologists lots of information on where to continue their treasure hunt. Before archaeologists start swinging their shovels, they engage in a bit of a visual scan mission. Armed with the grid system, they'll stroll around the site, keeping their eyes peeled for any artifacts that might be hiding just beneath the Earth's upper layer. From ground stone tools to historic glass, and even ancient garbage dumps, yes, they're also available. These keen-eyed explorers can spot signs of human activity faster than most people. If they stumble upon mitten soil, a fancy term for a garbage dump, geophysical tools are like their secret weapons. Take the resistivity meter, for example. This clever contraption measures the electrical component of soil and any buried features or artifacts. A buried wall, for instance, will create a different resistivity reading than the surrounding soil. Magnetometers and ground-penetrating radar work in similar ways, showcasing potential hints of ancient treasures in the soil. And who could forget our trusty old friend, the GPS? It helps archaeologists map out precise locations, 
like a high-tech treasure map, leading them straight to their pot of gold. Care to virtually visit some of the most important archaeological sites in the world? Well, follow me. In the United Kingdom, for instance, you'll find this interesting place called Stonehenge. It's one of the many hinges scattered around, but this one takes the cake. Picture this, massive ancient stone standing tall and proud, arranged in a funky outer ring and an inner horseshoe, with some smaller thrown in for good measure. And guess what? These amazing stones have been around for over 5,000 years. Talk about a serious case of rock-solid longevity. Now here's where it gets interesting. According to local folklore, the legendary wizard Merlin whips out his magic wand and poof, he teleported these massive stones from Ireland. Some giants had assembled them there, but Merlin decided they would look much better at their new location. Others think it's just the ruined remains of an old Roman spiritual edifice. These amazing structures were built by Bronze Age ancestors. With their simple tools and limited tech, they managed to create this monumental masterpiece. Impressive, right? Unfortunately, there's still so much we don't know about this area. Stonehenge's initial purpose remains a mystery to this day. Sure, there's a lot of theories, but scientists have yet to agree on the subject. However, we do know that it's perfectly aligned to catch the sunrise during the summer and winter solstices. The ancient city of Pompeii is an equally amazing archaeological site. Picture this. Mount Vesuvius, a notorious troublemaker, decided to throw a volcanic tantrum and completely cover this ancient Roman city. It turned it into a time capsule located outside present-day Naples in Italy. Fast forward to the year 1748, when a bunch of adventurous explorers stumbled upon Pompeii. Lo and behold, they discovered a treasure trove of well-preserved goodies, streets, houses, and food. Probably a bit stale by then. Blinky jewelry, fancy sculptures, colorful frescoes, everyday household items, and even animal and human remains. It was like an epic archaeological party. From the looks of it, Pompeii had it all. Fancy houses and villas, a massive 20,000 arena, cute little artisan shops, hangouts like taverns, and let's not forget the saucy spots like those luxurious bathhouses for some intense pampering. There's also the Sanctuary of Apollo, where people used to gather for their daily dose of worship. And of course, the bustling heart of the city, the Forum of Pompeii, where all the cool people used to hang out. And guess what? Pompeii is so cool that it made it to UNESCO's World Heritage List back in 1997. That's like the ultimate hall of fame for historical awesomeness. It also includes many other famous buildings and sites like the Taj Mahal in India, and the Acropolis of Athens in Greece. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the jewel side.